And that brings us to our next item specified on a bond's indenture, that is, credit enhancements. Credit enhancements are provisions that can be used to reduce the credit risk of a bond issue. They're very often used when creating ABS, so we shall discuss this section in the context of ABS. There are two primary types of credit enhancements, internal and external. Internal enhancements are built into the structure of the bond issue, while external enhancements are provided by a third party. The most common forms of internal credit enhancement are subordination, over collateralization, and reserve accounts. Subordination, also known as credit tranching, is a method where a bond issue is divided into tranches with different seniority of claims. The cash flows generated by the underlying assets first go to fulfilling the obligations of the most senior bonds, then to the next highest priority bonds, and so forth. This is sometimes referred to as waterfall structure. As in this case, if the underlying asset yields less than the expected cash flows needed to fulfill all obligations, the bonds with lowest seniority get hit first. The most senior tranches in this structure can receive very high credit ratings and so its yield is the lowest. This is because the probability that losses will be so large that they cannot be absorbed by subordinate tranches is very low. Consequently, the subordinated tranches must have higher yields to compensate investors for the additional risk of default. Over collateralization is the method in which the collateral pledged has a value greater than the par value of the debt issued. The additional collateral can be used to absorb losses. For example, if the principal amount of a bond issue is $10 million and the value of the collateral is $11 million, the amount of over collateralization is $1 million. The amount of over collateralization changes with time. For example, if property was pledged as collateral, the amount of over collateralization will fluctuate as a result of changing valuations of the property. Reserve accounts can come in two forms a cash reserve fund and an excess spread account. A cash reserve fund is simply a deposit of cash that can be used to absorb losses. If the cash flow from the asset is insufficient to meet the promised payments, the cash flow from the account can be used to top up the difference. With an excess spread account, the expected yield on the asset supporting the ABS is greater than the obligations on the bonds issued. This gives some protection if the yield on the assets is less than anticipated. If the assets perform as anticipated, the excess cash flow from the collateral is deposited into the excess spread account. This reserve cash can be used to retire some of the outstanding bonds in the future. External credit enhancements include surety bonds, bank guarantees, and letters of credit from financial institutions. Surety bonds are issued by insurance companies, while bank guarantees are from banks. Both of them serve the same function. They are a promise to make up any shortfall in the cash available to service the debt. So if the expected cash flow and obligation to the debt holders is $10 million, but the actual cash flow is only $7 million, the insurance company or bank will have to top up the shortfall of $3 million. A letter of credit works under similar circumstances. The difference here is that it is a promise to lend the shortfall amount to the issuing entity instead of paying out the amount. While all three of these external credit enhancements increase the credit quality of debt issues and decrease their yields, deterioration of the credit quality of the guarantor will also reduce the credit quality of the covered issue. You're watching an excerpt from our comprehensive animation library. For more videos like these, head on down to prepnuggets.com. At Prep Nuggets, let us do the hard work for you.